Hello everyone, it's Tam here from Willowing Arts and I'm back with another time-lapse video of one of my recent paintings of a girl with her fox friend and some birds in the sky. And I thought I'd tell you a little bit about uh, the imagery in the painting, what it means to me, and why I included it, and also bits about supplies and the struggles I had, because I did, again, have a bit of a struggle at some point. So I uh, chose to work with the imagery of the girl, the fox, and the swallow. So the birds in the sky are swallows, and swallows are a more recent um, new image or imagery or symbol in my paintings, in my work. And that's really because we moved down to Devon about two years ago. And one of the most delightful things about living here, I mean, there's many, 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 many delightful things about living here. But one of them is that we, every summer, a group of swallows comes back and nests in our old dilapidated barn. And they are these beautiful, delightful creatures, these birds that are flitting around on summer evenings. They're catching mosquitoes and bugs and whatnot. And they absolutely enchant me. I find them relaxing and um, inspiring and lovely to behold. <laughs> and uh, I always look for, well, always, I've only lived here for two years, but I look forward to when they come back. So last year we had them and then they come back this year and it's really, really lovely to see these birds flitting around. So they've made an appearance um, in my work a bit lately, a couple a late, more often. And this time I wanted to make them a bit more prominent because it's currently summer and so they've recently arrived again. And uh, yeah, the, the rest of the painting also is sort of themed around a sort of a, th a summer sort of theme because you will see later on that I ha also have added little flowery, as you can see there in the hair, flowers in the hair and in the sky and also on the, the fox itself. I've added some little floral, flowery elements, both on the body and on the head. And so I'm kind of really getting into a summer summer theme and using summery colors like oranges and pinks and bright ye yellows and things like that. So I'm working today with uh, my usual materials. They are water-soluble crayons, Tombows, collage, um, some color pencils, Prismacolor pencils, and let's see, a pencil obviously for drawing, and some white acrylics, paint or gesso, and uh, Posca pens. So here you can see me adding collage to the background and on her top as well. And the top is where I'm starting to eventually later on have some real big trouble with. I go over the top three or two or three times with like different layers. Uh, and I just basically, I'm not happy with it. I change it again. I'm not happy with it. I change it again. And that actually happens quite a bit in my work. You know, when you often we just share the sort of final result of a painting, but sometimes um, you, well, what you don't see is the struggles that some artists go through. Sometimes I don't struggle. Sometimes it goes easier, but there's often a, a niggly point that I'm sort of wrestling with. So remember that if you're you know, learning and being an art, you know, like taking classes and whatever. Do not assume that the people whose work you like don't struggle. So here I'm adding some white gesso with brayer over the background layer and the top and I like to do this to create a kind of textured effect and a bit of a, a vintage sort of effect um, and it also unites in the, the, the sort of the layers and that mutes the background uh, kind of mutes it as well if I feel it's too bright. So here I'm working on the fox a bit more with some shading and kind of making the fox stand out. So the other thing that you may have seen earlier was that in the uh, uh, top area I had drawn a couple of elements. So I'd drawn a butterfly wing, a snail, 
and some natural shapes, like some twirly foliage. <laughs> Now the snail also was really important for me to stay because the, the snail as well, <laughs> I want to tell you about the snails that are around here, is I am a late worker so I often work until about one or two in the morning and each night when I walk from my studio to the house, my studio is separate from the house, I'm met with about 10 or so snails that come out because the ground is moist, you know, how mid in midnight the, the damp or I don't know what starts to happen but because it gets colder the the air conden condensates, I suppose, the hot air. I don't know what the logic is. <laughs> anyway, uh, I met with a lot of snails and they are the sweetest little creatures. They're so gentle and slow and I just really love them. So also snails have come out a bit more in my work. I've, ha I've added quite a few snails lately to some of my paintings. And that is because I just, I'm feeling really connected to snails at the moment. Like every time when I go out, they're there. And they sort of remind me to go slower in my way of being. Um, and I'm really listening. So um, here I'm, I'm trying to bring the imagery back that I lost during the collage and to bring this now, but, but I'm using a, um, a Stabilo all pencil and I love Stabilo all pencils and I also find them hard to work with because they, um, they are very water reactive, like extremely water reactive. So here I started to add all these details and I just wasn't feeling how it all came together. I like the snail, but the color and the background and then I, Every time I wanted to change something, the actual Stabila all started to sort of activate. So you can see, oh no, I had to, I collaged over it again. So if I, put, if I paint over it with gesso or whatever, the Stabila all is going to react. So I collaged over it, added color again, tried my imagery again, and you'll see later that I again wasn't happy with how it ended up being. <laughs> And when that happens, I do actually have to say, I do get frustrated. I'm not happy with if I struggle with a certain, you know, part of a painting. The rest I was all happy with. I like the background, I like the girl, I like the hair, I like the fox, I like the everything. But the top and the imagery in the top was bugging me and it, the colors sort of didn't work. The imagery wouldn't work, etc, etc. So anyway, I decided to work a little bit more on the rest of the painting before getting back to this um, bottom half. It's not, no, I'm looking back on it now. I thought, well, now I'm looking at it, I'm like, I could have kept that. But as you can see, I'm not keeping it. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> so yeah, the top of her was a struggle. So I hear I put that gesso on, or I think it was gesso, and I work a bit more on the background. And uh, I think I'm sort of quietly, um, get, get, you know, talking to myself about how frustrating the top is <laughs> while it's in the background, ignoring it. And then I added in the purple that was also on the hair. And sometimes it can be, mm, I don't know, too samey when you add color that is in the hair also to the top. But this time I found it really worked. So I was right with, I liked the color uh, and that color instead of the mostly only magenta and yellow which is what you find in the background. So it's it was also a color scheme problem as well as, no, I just found it all not clear. <laughs> and so finally, when I chose these colors, I brought, try it again with my imagery, same and similar, similar imagery. Um, my Posca pen didn't like working on these layers because now it had layers of gel medium and gesso and collage and it wasn't great, but I look, they see it nice, it's look. <laughs> Look, I'm sure you're looking. Um, I really, I liked how the purple against the white and the, the black lines were. So I stuck with it. I was much happier with how that came out. Added back the imagery and then I was like, oh no, don't forget the snail. I like snails so much. They're so gentle and slow and kind. And one of the worst things in the world is when you step on a snail. I, I feel so bad when I step on a snail. Now here, you know what's happening with the snail? <laughs> I um I I didn't I can't, I can't remember I, I wasn't sure about its shape or I'd activated something and I, anyway I fixed it later look I didn't I didn't film that bit anymore but I fixed the snail and it stays mostly gray but then I add highlights with white later on and it fits uh, I was happy in the end I was fine with it <laughs> anyway here's a long story about the snail on the top <laughs> Okay, so anyway, back to the background and the other elements. So now I come to a point where I'm adding uh, my doodles and the birds and background. I'm finishing sort of looking at background elements and... 
that kind of stuff and see because I lately like to work with uh, oh look here I'm referring back to my imagery so when I what I do do so I'm jumping um, is I because I work with a lot of collage I often don't remember exactly where I placed my original sketches and I do sometimes want to refer back to it so it's always a good idea to take a photo of your sketch if you work like me where you're very heavy-handed on the layering anywho uh, yes, because I like using the crayons a little bit more thickly lately, like so I don't dilute it as much as I used to. The Posca pens sometimes find it hard to go over it because it's, the waxiness remains. So sometimes I struggle a bit, a little bit with using Posca pens over my crayons. Well, if you really dilute it with a lot more water, you can do it. But if you keep it waxy, Posca pens don't like drawing on waxy stuff. The thicker ones like these can manage, but the thinner ones find it difficult. So, I'm nearly getting to the end, pretty much the end of the painting now, and this is the stage that I start to add the final touches, like eyelashes and other doodles and detail. I'm touching up detail, I'm adding uh, any kind of like little houses like this, or I'm refining and defining line work that may have got lost here. I'm fixing my little snail friend. I love snails so, so much. They're so lovely. So, we are nearly there. Uh, the background here, I remember looking at the swallows and thinking, hmm, you can see my, my hands go, <laughs> are like pondering. The, um, the swallows, I felt, were needed another one or two on the left to finish off almost like a circle, as if they're flying around her head. So I eventually actually do decide to add two more swallows and also some more um, stars in black because the black and the swallows and also the hanging hearts and stars in her top and around her neck the black is pretty dominating so I wanted to kind of bring some of that black also further into the background like with this star here so the swallows and the other elements that are black are not too dominating and pull your eye away too much from the other characters so that's what I'm doing here right now right now um, I'm nearly at the end of this video, so if you enjoy listening to me <laughs> to talk and if you enjoy my paintings, please do come and check out my website and classes. I teach art like this and uh, often these classes are also filled with well-being exercises and that sort of thing. So come and check out my site www.willowing.org. There are also some free classes there. If you um, join the site you automatically get added to a free course called, uh, called Art, Art and Healing. And uh, I hope to uh, see you on some of my classes as well. I loved uh, creating it a lot. In the end I was very happy with the color scheme and uh, the free freedom really that these swallows represent to me I suppose and yeah you can see here that I added the the sixth and the seventh uh, I, know, I think slightly out of camera now but basically I'm adding in more birds and final touches so if you have loved um, this video please do remember to subscribe to my channel and you can also click on the little bell and that means you get notified each time I upload a video. Thank you for being here with me today. I hope you enjoyed listening to me to talk about this painting and I can't wait to upload my next video and I'm trying to do this more frequently if and when I have the time. Have a wonderful month and you are loved. Bye bye.